Hello everyone and welcome to this room. This is Ren speaking. As usual, I'll be your host today and today <clears throat> I want to return to the, the, the three types of uh, I and AJ life that you can lead, which is discussed in this book, by the way, The Infinite Soul, which you can get at all the links below. Get this copy for an investigation of uh, how I and can fit in everyday modern life in the world today, right? All the links below. And by the way, you can also get the companion piece, the prequel, The Ecstatic Soul. You know, it's a well-known book. I and Psyche, check it out below. Um, now... I, in the Infinite Soul, I, <clears throat> I uh, propose um, uh, a categorization of INFJs. Again, here, we're not interested in the subtypes of INFJs in terms of their inner psychology, such as, for example, when <clears throat> sometimes INFJs are divided between the heavy TI INFJs or the more social I, uh, heavy FE INFJs or the you know, INFJs this, INFJs that. In the ecstatic soul, I discuss some of that, and in a lot of articles you and videos, you'll find discussions of these. But the, the subtypes I'm interested in are really ways for INFGs to be in the world. And um, I sketched a distinction between the, the solipsistic INFG, who's very alienated and, and kind of finding a, what's ultimately a smothering comfort in, in his or her alienation, uh, the um, adapted submissive INFJs, the one who goes along with the others just to fit in but sacrifices their unique identity and therefore their fullness of soul in the long term. And then the liberated INFJ, right, the infinite soul, the one that gives his or her name to the book. Um, and one thing that I've realized, you know, of course, if you want a further investigation of these three different types, uh, check, get the book. But uh, one thing that occurred to me, you know, in terms of different lifestyles, different modes of living, that I didn't really uh, explore in much detail in the book, it's just something that occurred to me not long ago, is that <clears throat> one thing that the liberated INFJ does, you know, the integrated INFJ does, um, that the others don't do. It's funny that the solipsistic INFJ and the uh, get along with the others kind of submissive INFJ, what they have in common is that they usually, and we're talking about the world now, right? They usually don't read much. Something that, uh, something that I've noticed. I've noticed it in everyday life. Of course, I've noticed it online as well. And one of the worries I have is that uh, maybe in the decades to come, this is me, me, comma, and INFJ engaging in a bit of prospective analysis, how cliche you might say. Um, one thing that I'm afraid of is that in the years or decades to come, there will be more solipsistic and more submissive INFJs uh, for the simple reason that with the younger generations, reading just seems to be something uh, less attractive. You know, obviously it demands that you marshal uh, attention span and, and, and patience and dedication to long tasks, lengthy tasks that maybe the younger generation struggles with more for a whole host of different reasons that I don't think need, need to be uh, gone into now. But um, I, I, I do think that, you know, when you're a slave to immediacy or to the very short term, so of course that can include social media posts, that, in, that can include at some level television, uh, mostly YouTube, Twitch, and and of course, TikTok and all these media that tends to go, you know, if you think about it more and more toward like very short form formats, it's attractive to everybody in the sense that it can be addictive for just about anybody. But I think it's not going to be beneficial for an INFJ for their own fullness and for their growth. And so ultimately for their blossoming, thriving and finding happiness in society to let themselves be sucked into this this uh, soul universe of immediacy because the divorce from the practice of reading reading books you know look at this for example this is with one book i'm reading at the moment it's uh it's 409 pages it also happens to be a trilogy of beckett novels that you might be familiar with or not Beckett, definitely NI dominance. I'm not sure yet about uh, if he's an INFJ or an INTJ. But anyway, um, 
how many people do that these days, particularly maybe younger generations. Uh, when you read a book, you are in a sense forced to enter into the world of another and you're not just forced to engage with the world of another. So it's not just, you know, the very quick sort of rapid fire perspective of another person, you know, that, that like you can that, get that on social media. You have to actually enter the world of another person, the ecosystem that another person has created and have patience with it, explore it. Um, and, um, and in a sense, acclimatize to it. So it's really a way of inhabiting another person's perspective, um, which is really the key to alienation, which is why solipsistic INFJs, contrary to what people might think, even though they're very extroverted and, and they are probably the ones that are the most susceptible to the loop NI and TI, it's not like they, they, they don't like people and just stay home and read lots of books. You know, that, that's kind of a misleading idea about what solipsistic INFJs are like. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I, I realize that solipsistic INFJs don't read much either. They consume stuff and they create holistically worlds of their own because NI cannot help but do that. But because they're often starved of reading material, like long-term reading material, not just short articles or blurbs, uh, you know, or like Twitter uh, texts or whatever, um, they often create worlds that are dysfunctionally alienated, you know, just bits and pieces from here and there, but it's not really engaging with the outside world, which implies socially engaging with the perspective of another person. If you're highly introverted and you don't like doing that too often in social circles, well, something as basic as reading a book is a way to stabilize your relationship to an external perspective, not make it erratic, not make it impatient, not make it in a sense, frantic and manic, you know, just allow yourself to just slowly fill the shoes of that other perspective and let it enrich your own anti holistic mental landscape. Um, and that's something that the liberated INFJ in my typology would do. But uh, one, you know, the submissive INFJ just doesn't feel the need to do that because they're happy to just look at whatever other people are doing and try doing the same and fitting in. But the solipsistic, solipsistic INFJ is kind of has a rejection of others' perspective, even in the books of other people. And it's something that's only occurred to me more recently. So it's something to, to be mindful of, you know. Uh, if you're someone, if you identify as an INFJ, if you think that you're an INFJ, you see yourself as an INFJ, but you don't read, you don't read books. Perhaps ask yourself the question, could I benefit from that? Could that help me with my alienation? I think it would. But let me know in the comments what you think, guys, and I will talk to you tomorrow. I have a Patreon page, by the way, which you can check out at the links below as well. It always helps massively when I get new supporters. Don't underestimate how important it is for the channel. Okay, guys, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.